SpaceX's Starship has secured yet another significant contract. Star Lab Space, a collaboration between Voyager Space and Airbus Space and Defense, announced on January 31st that it had selected SpaceX's monumental Starship rocket for a single mission launch of its outpost into orbit. Dylan Taylor, chairman and CEO of Voyager Space, highlighted, SpaceX's track record of success and reliability led our team to select Starship for orbiting Starlab. SpaceX stands as the unrivaled leader for high cadence launches, and we are thrilled that Starlab will be launched to orbit in a single flight by Starship. In a statement, SpaceX declared, Starship will revolutionize space access, enabling the launch of entire space stations like Starlab in a single mission. According to the plan, NASA and the developers of Starlab aim to have the four-person commercial station operational before 2030, coinciding with the expected cessation of operations for the International Space Station. NASA has long advocated for the development of private outposts, ensuring that its astronauts will have a place to live and work in low Earth orbit after the ISS concludes its mission. In December of 2021, NASA NASA disclosed its allocation of $415 million to three companies, Blue Origin, Nanorax, part of Voyager Space, and Northrop Grumman, to advance their commercial space station projects. Additionally, NASA holds a separate agreement with Houston-based Axiom Space, which is progressing with its independent private outpost. However, developments have unfolded since then. Notably, Northrop Grumman opted to discontinue its station project and instead merged with the Voyager Space team, a move that also brought European aerospace giant Airbus into the fold. Voyager and Airbus established a joint venture named Starlab Space LLC, tasked with constructing and operating the Starlab station. Meanwhile, the Blue Origin-led consortium persists in developing its outpost concept, dubbed Orbital Reef. Returning to recent updates, Voyager and Airbus announced on January 9th the finalization of the Starlab Space joint venture. Following its initial announcement in August, Voyager had been collaborating collaborating with Airbus since January of the previous year on the design of Starlab after concluding an earlier partnership with Lockheed Martin. The companies meticulously crafted Starlab to be launched in a single flight configuration. The station comprises a substantial habitation and laboratory module accompanied by a smaller service module responsible for power and propulsion. Consequently, the substantial size of Starlab rendered it improbable for launch on anything other than Starship. During a presentation at the Space Tech Expo, Expo Europe conference in Bremen, Germany, last November, Manfred Yaumann, vice president of low Earth orbit and suborbital programs at Airbus, revealed that the module boasts a diameter exceeding 8 meters. This dimension exceeds the capacity of vehicles currently in operation or under development, aside from Starship. The towering 122 meter Starship stands as the largest and most potent rocket ever constructed capable of ferrying up to 150 tons to low Earth orbit. As mentioned by Taylor earlier, it will propel the fully equipped Starlab in a single launch. Starlab's single launch solution continues to demonstrate not only what is possible, but also how the future of commercial space is unfolding today, remarked Tom Ocinero, Senior Vice President of Commercial Business at SpaceX in the same statement. The SpaceX team eagerly anticipates Starship's launch of Starlab to facilitate human humanity's sustained presence in low Earth orbit as we advance toward the goal of establishing life on multiple planets. Ochinero further elaborated, Today's announcement did not specify a launch site for Starlab. Starship may potentially embark from Florida's space coast when the private outpost is prepared for liftoff. However, Starship may be destined to launch Starlab from Starbase, and perhaps SpaceX can include some of its Starlink broadband satellites on the flight as well. Similar to Starship, Starlab will be constructed from stainless steel, a decision influenced by the availability of large launch vehicles capable of delivering up to 100 tons into low Earth orbit. Additionally, the module will undergo fabrication in a shipyard and undergo complete integration on the ground before launch, obviating the need for assembly in orbit. This streamlined approach reduces manufacturing duration to three years, Yelman explained, while slashing launch costs by 
over 80%. Concurrently with the advancement of Starship, Falcon 9 remains SpaceX's primary workhorse. The company is preparing to launch a private moon lander in February aboard this rocket. The robotic Nova Sea spacecraft was recently enclosed within the payload fairing of its SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket, marking a significant milestone in readiness for liftoff. As our teams sealed the two fairing halves, I caught a final glimpse of the lunar lander on Earth, remarked Trent Martin, Vice President for Space Systems at Intuitive Machines during a press briefing. The launch, slated from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station on Florida's Space Coast, is scheduled within a three-day window in mid-February, pending successful preparations. Although specific dates have yet to be announced by SpaceX and Intuitive Machines, Martin confirmed that Nova Sea's lunar landing attempt is set for February 22nd, regardless of the exact day. Should the launch be postponed during the February window, the next opportunity will arise in March. The upcoming mission, known as IM-1, aims to deploy Nova C near the Malapert A impact crater, situated within 10 degrees latitude of the moon's south pole. This region holds immense scientific interest due to its potential abundance of water ice. Intuitive Machine's Nova C lander, named Odysseus, is equipped with six NASA science instruments as part of the agency's Commercial Lunar Payload Services Program, or CLPS. CLPS leverages private robotic landers to collect scientific data crucial for establishing a sustainable human presence on and around the moon, aligning with NASA's Artemis program objectives. Nova C follows in the footsteps of Astrobotics Peregrine spacecraft, the first CLPS-supported lunar lander to embark on its mission. Peregrine launched on January 8th aboard United Launch Alliance's new Vulcan Centaur rocket. While Vulcan Centaur performed admirably, Peregrine encountered a fuel leak shortly after separating from the rocket's upper stage. Despite challenges, the lander remained operational in deep space space for 10 days before being deliberately directed for controlled destruction in Earth's atmosphere on the 18th of January. And for the final segment of today's episode, NASA has unveiled the lineup for the upcoming SpaceX Crew-9 mission to the International Space Station this summer. The Crew-9 team comprises cosmonaut Alexander Gorbanov from the Russian space agency Roscosmos, alongside three NASA astronauts, Zena Carbman, Nick Haig, and Stephanie Wilson, as announced by NASA on Wednesday afternoon. Carbman will lead the mission as commander, while Haig will serve as pilot. Wilson and Gorbanov will undertake duties as mission specialists. Scheduled for liftoff atop a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket from Florida's Space Coast, Crew-9 is earmarked for no earlier than August, with a definitive launch date yet to be disclosed. For both Carbman and Gorbanov, Crew-9 will mark their inaugural spaceflight, having been selected by their respective space agencies in 2017 and 2018. Haig boasts prior spaceflight experience with two missions under his belt, including an extended stay at the International Space Station in 2019. Notably, his previous ISS launch was preceded by an aborted mission due to a rocket malfunction, resulting in an emergency landing. Both Haig and cosmonaut Alexei Ovchinin emerged unscathed from the incident. Haig's cumulative time spent in space totals 203 days. Wilson brings with her a wealth of experience, having a accumulated 42 days off Earth across three orbital missions, all aboard the Space Shuttle Discovery. Her most recent flight, STS-131, took place in April of 2010. As implied by its name, Crew-9 marks the ninth operational astronaut mission to the ISS, facilitated by SpaceX, utilizing the company's Falcon 9 rocket and Dragon capsule for NASA. This mission will briefly overlap with Crew-8, whose four astronauts are slated to launch toward the orbiting laboratory no earlier than February 22nd. And that's about all we have for you today. Thank you so much for tuning in, and if you want to support our channel even further, you can hop on over to our Patreon through the link in the description below. Sign up and become a patron today to gain access to exclusive content. Sounds exciting, doesn't it? In any case, we still appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.